But I'll tell you one thing when I think of, when I think of the term x-ray and tell me what your opinion is on that. I still think that patients and the public have a difficult time understanding. And I do think they should understand it. The amount of radiation exposure from certain devices. So if you go to some radiology sites, they'll put the term uh, in terms of chest x-rays, in terms of the number of x-rays you're getting. So if you get a CT of this type, or you get a PET CT, or you get a bone scan, that's equivalent to so many x-rays. And so I don't know, do you, I, I, I kind of wish I would see more sites where when I was getting an imaging device, it would tell me how much radiation I'm being exposed to. It's not, doesn't mean you're, you're not going to get it. It's just getting a better understanding of radiation exposure, I don't think is a bad thing. Do you? Yeah, I, I struggle with the whole radiation exposure thing because I think a lot of patients, uh, it's just like if I were to give you a number, right? We typically report things in millisieverts. It's a meaningless right. number. Um, and the same, like we have so little understanding of the impact of some of these doses. Uh, you know, the whole debate over radiation injury, particularly in a prostate cancer patient when you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, the doses we're talking about are just irrelevant, right? They're so low. And, and the only reason why we have some idea as to what they might be is we, we take, literally, we take Hiroshima bomb survivors, look at rates of secondary malignancies, and we say, okay, this person got some huge dose, and we have all these doses, and we just extrapolate the line down to the little doses they're imaging and say, oh, okay, well, then you have a 0.001% chance of developing leukemia. And, well, I mean, I don't, it, it's, it's a little bit far-fetched. So the, the doses here, you know, doses that matter are what you get for external beam radiation, right? I mean, yeah. those are huge doses. They're given all at once, right? And clearly, when you fractionate your doses out over longer periods of time, they have much lower effect. Uh, so, you know, in essence, when you're getting like a CT scan, which is a dose that's, I don't know, 10 to 100 fold more than an x-ray, that dose is so low, it's not relevant in terms of anything with that individual patient. So, and isn't, it, you have a, but isn't, and isn't it true, enough. as all these technologies become better and better, you're actually, so for example, emerging with a PET with a CT, you're, the actual exposure to the, the actual radiation exposure to some of these images have gone down. Are there, isn't that the case when a number of these things are combined, they were becoming more judicious, it's becoming more favorable anyway. That's yes and no. So when you do a PET with a CT, you get the dose from the CT and from the PET. Uh, gallium has a pretty low dose. It has a 68 minute half-life. Uh, we don't give a huge amount of activity. So compared to like FDG, the regular sugar is probably about half or a little less than half of the dose that you get from FDG. Hmm. Um, but yes, the so CT scans, the dose from a CT scan has gone down over time with technology improvements. So we now use iterative re different reconstruction techniques so we can use fewer photons, you need fewer photons to actually image the patient. And we get maybe half the dose that we used to have from a CT scan, et cetera. So the doses are definitely going down in the CT perspective. But when you add PET to a CT, it actually doesn't go down uh, in that sense. But bone scans are actually a pretty high dose. Yeah. Um, so yes, and they actually have a lower dose than a bone scan. Uh, so That's yeah, it, it, 